discussion for the seminar is research advances in the management of prostate cancer. In management of prostate cancer, first we have to see two things: the life expectancy estimation and the uh, the risk stratification of the patient. In case of like life expectancy of the patient, we have to see the WHO life tables, which is enlisted in the in their site as per the country. The latest for India is ongoing is 2019, and the others are Social Security Administration tables and Memorial Salon catering male life expectancy expectancy tool. And uh, these expectancy life expectancy survival is adjusted by the clinician with assessment of overall health. He can add 50 percent if the patient is in best of his health, or subtract 50 percent, or there can be no adjustment. The new feature incorporated in the recommendation between the observation and active surveillance is ACE27 Adult Comorbidity Evaluation Index. It is a 26 item comorbidity index accounting for the presence and severity of the individual medical illness by grading them into 1 to 4 comorbidity classes that is none mild, moderate or severe. Comorbidity is in the terms in the regard to the cardiovascular system, the respiratory, gastrointestinal, renal neurological, endocrine and psychiatric system. The second most important point is risk, uh, risk stratification. In case of local, uh, in case of local disease that is uh, it has been grouped into very low risk low risk intermediate favorable and intermediate unfavorable and high and very high risk in case of very low risk it in, it has all the following clinical stage t1c grade group 1 that is gleason's grade and psa less than 10 nanogram per ml and fewer than 3 prostate biopsy fragments or gall positive and less than grade uh, shivam 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 grade yeah. group is not same as gleason score a uh, grade group is mem uh, uh, new classification that is uh, if the grade group is 1 it is uh, 6 the uh, gleason uh, score is 6 and if it's uh, grade group is 2 it is 3 plus 7 that is uh, 3 plus 4 is equal to 7 if it is uh, grade group 3 it is 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 and when it is grade group 4 it is 4 plus uh, uh, 4 is equal to 8 and if it is 5 it is uh, Gleason uh, grade nine or ten. Uh, it contains it. Uh, it takes into account only Gleason, so there is something else also with it. Gleason's uh, score only, ma'am. If it is uh, okay, okay. Prim primary is the. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll discuss later. Chalo, aage chalo. In case of lower risk group, it has all of the following: clinical stage T and uh, clinical stage T two A grade group one and PSA less than ten nanogram per ml. In case of favorable intermediate group, it has all of the following. Intermediate has been divided into favorable and unfavorable. It depends upon the intermediate risk factors. That is clinical stage two B and clinical stage two C, grade group two or three, PSA levels ten to twenty. Favorable intermediate, it has all of the following. One intermediate risk group. Grade group 1 or 2, less than 50% YFC course positive, that is less than 6 of 12 cores. Unfavorable intermediate, is a, it has one or more of the following, 2 or 3 intermediate risk factors. Grade group 3, more than 50% of YFC course positive, that is more than 6 of 12 cores. Next category is high risk. It has exactly one high risk feature. Clinical stage CT3A or grade group 4 or grade group 5 or PSA level more than 20 nanogram per ml. And very high risk group has at least one of the following clinical stage CT3B or 2 CT4 uh, primary Gleason pattern 5, 2 or 3 high risk feature which has been mentioned above and more than 4 cores with grade group 4 or 5. In case of very low risk group, uh, it, uh, the, the treatment depends upon the expected survival. The expected survival, if it is more than 20 years, then active surveillance is preferred. Other options are ex uh, external beam radiotherapy or brachytherapy. Another option is radical prostatectomy. If the expected survival is 10 to 20 years, active surveillance. If it is less than 10 years, then it is observation. In case of observation, uh, the history and physical examination is done every 12 monthly. It is recommended for asymptomatic patients with very low low intermediate risk groups with a life expectancy of less than five years. Asymptomatic patients with very low and low risk prostate cancer with a life expectancy of five to 10 years. It can be considered in patients of asymptomatic patients with favorable and unfavorable intermediate risk prostate cancer and a life expectancy between five to 10 years. 
and in asymptomatic patients with high risk or very high risk or regional or metastatic prostate cancer and a life expectancy of less than 5 years. Effective surveillance, it is preferred in very low risk prostate cancer and a life expectancy of more than 10 years. Except in case of high PSA density, a high number of positive cohorts more than 3, high genomic risk or a non worker 2 germline mutation. It can be considered in favorable intermediate risk and a life expectancy of more than 10 years. In cases of Gleason veteran for cancer, low tumor volume, low PSA density or low genomic risk. And uh, in cases of active surveillance, confirmatory testing is essential. The initial, since an initial biopsy may underestimate tumor grade or volume, confirmatory testing is strongly recommended within 6 to 12 months of diagnosis. Options for confirmatory testing includes prostate biopsy, multiparametric MRI with calculation of PSA density or molecular tumor analysis. Early confirmation, confirmatory testing may not be necessary in patients who had done multi-parametric MRI prior to a diagnostic biopsy. They can undergo a confirmatory prostate biopsy within one to two years of their diagnostic biopsy. In active surveillance program, program, it includes PSA every six months, digital rectal examination every 12 months, repeat prostate biopsy every 12 months, repeat multi-parametric MRI every 12 months. Frequency can be early if, the, if it is clinically indicated. Patients should be transitioned to observation when the life expectancy is less than 10 years. The rationale of uh, active surveillance. Between 50 in the studies conducted, between 50 to 68 percent of those eligible for active surveillance may safely avoid treatment for at least 10 years. Between 32 to 50 percent of the patients will undergo treatment over 10 years, although treatment delays do not seem to impact cure rate. Although the risk is very low, less than 0.5 percent, it is possible for a cancer to progress to regional or metastatic disease. So active surveillance is preferred. During active surveillance, when to act? Rate reclassification on repeat biopsy is the most common factor. Other factors are increase in tumor volume, rise in PSA density or patient anxiety. What are the factors? If we do a radical prostatectomy in very low risk group, what are the factors we have to see for adverse pathological features, positive margins, seminal or cycle involvement or extracapsular extension or detectable PSA after radical prostatectomy. Then we have to go for adjuvant EBRT, uh, reduce RP plus and plus minus andro androgen deprivation therapy or we can go for monitoring. In cases of in cases of very low risk after radical prostatectomy or after EBRT brachytherapy, if there are no uh, adverse fixture features, we can put the patient on monitoring. That is PSA every 6 to 12 months for 5 years, then every yearly. And digital rec uh, rectal examination every year. We, uh, when to act in monitoring, if we are monitoring a patient after radical prostatectomy, there are two uh, things which can occur. That is PSA persistent persistence, that is failure of PSA to fall to undetectable level after a radical prostatectomy and PSA recurrence. PSA recurrence is undetectable PSA after radical prostatectomy with a subsequent detectable PSA that increases on two or more, more determination. In case of after uh, radiotherapy, PSA recurrence is PSA increased by 2 nanogram per ml or more above, uh, above the post-RT PSA level. And uh, radiographic evidence of metastatic disease with, without PSA persistent or recurrence. In case of post-radical prostatectomy recurrence, we can consider bone or soft tissue imaging and prostate bed biopsy. If, if on this investigation we found there are no distant meds, we can go for EBRT plus androgen deprivation therapy or observation. If there are uh, uh, distant meds are positive, they can we can directly go for systemic therapy for castration, naive disease. In case of post radiotherapy recurrence, trust biopsy is done and uh, spawn and soft tissue imaging are considered. If the trust biopsy is positive and there are no metastasis and life expectancy is more than 10 years, there are options of observation or radical prostatectomy plus pelvic lymph node dissection or brachytherapy or cryotherapy. But if the life expectancy is less than 10 years, we have to go for observation or androgen deprivation therapy. In case of post radiotherapy recurrence, if trust uh, guided biopsy is negative and there are no mets, then we can put the patient on observation or androgen deprivation therapy. If there are METs positive, then we have to proceed to systematic therapy. In case of low uh, risk group, if the patient's uh, survival is more than 10 years, 
we can put the patient on active surveillance or radiotherapy or radical prostatectomy is an option. If the uh, patient survival is less than 10 years, we have to go for observation. Further monitoring is same and, and management is same as per the very low, low risk group. In case of favorable intermediate risk group, if expected sur uh, sur uh, survival is more than 10 years, then we can put a patient on active surveillance or radiotherapy or re uh, radical prostatectomy pro plus pelvic lymph node dissection if probability of lymph node mets is more than 2%. For 5 to 10 years group, the observation is preferred and uh, radiotherapy is another. In case of unfavorable intermediate risk groups, if expected patient survival is more than 10 years, uh, the options are radical prostatectomy plus pelvic lymph node dissection if probability of lymph node mets is more than 2%, EBRT plus brachytherapy plus androgen deprivation therapy or EBRT plus androgen deprivation therapy. If the survival is 5 to 10 years, then they put, when we can put the patient on observation or radiotherapy plus minus androgen deprivation therapy. The, in cases of unfavorable intermediate risk, the androgen deprivation therapy is for, for four to six months. High or very high risk group, if the expected patient survival is more than five years or the patient is symptomatic, then uh, we have to consider radiotherapy plus androgen deprivation therapy and uh, radiotherapy plus brachytherapy and androgen deprivation therapy. These both are category one recommendation and the other recommendations are uh, radiotherapy plus androgen deprivation therapy plus docetaxel. Another is uh, radiotherapy plus androgen deprivation therapy plus abiraterone. Another is radical prostatectomy plus pelvic lymph node dissection. Here the uh, androgen deprivation therapy is used for one to three years. In uh, uh, high or very high risk group, if the survival is less than five years or the patient is asymptomatic, then we can put the patient on observation or endogen deprivation therapy or radiotherapy alone. In case of regional prostate cancer, the expected patient survival is more than five years or patient is symptomatic, then we can uh, uh, the radiotherapy plus androgen deprivation therapy is preferred. Other options are radiotherapy plus androgen deprivation therapy plus arbitron. Other option is uh, androgen deprivation therapy plus arbitron. Another is the red radical prostatectomy plus pelvic lymph node dissection. In cases of uh, survival is less than five years and patient is asymptomatic, then we can put the patient on observation alone or androgen depri uh, deprivation therapy alone. Then the systemat uh, systematic therapy for castration IV patients. In case of non-metastatic disease, monitoring is preferred as per NCC guidelines and uh, another option is androgen deprivation therapy. For metastatic disease, the uh, treatment of choice is category one is androgen deprivation therapy plus abiraterone or apalotomide or enzalotomide or docetaxel. Another option is androgen deprivation therapy plus radiotherapy. Radiotherapy is generally use, uh, is used in case of low volume metastatic disease. Radiotherapy is given to the primary tumor. Another option is androgen deprivation therapy alone. The monitoring of this uh, for systematic therapy is physical examination for uh, three to six monthly, PSA three to six monthly, imaging if the patient is symptomatic and imaging to monitor treatment response. In case of progression, the systematic therapy for castration resistant prostate cancer is started. Abiraterone on acetate is an irreversible inhibitor of CYP, which converts pregnancy into steroid hormones, including androgen precursor. It can therefore block androgen produ uh, production, androgen production in the testes and adrenal glands, also in prostate tumor, thus preventing prostate cancer growth. Additional CYP17A1 inhibitors such as ortenarol and galanteron have been evaluated in clinical studies but did not reach their primary endpoint. Once the disease is spread out of the prostate, the androgen deprivation therapy, medical or chemical castration to decrease the circulatory testosterone levels is often used. Unfortunately, the response is only transient and most patients will develop resistance to the androgen deprivation therapy and progress towards castration resistant prostate cancer after 18 to uh, 36 months. The androgen receptor X is still an essential player in castration resistance prostate cancer and therapeutic options to achieve maximal androgen deprivation by blocking androgen, androgen receptor function directly with competitive antagonist of the ligand DHT or by reducing intratumoral androgen synthesis with a CYP17A1 Lyase or hydrolyase inhibitor have been proven highly beneficial. 
systemic therapy in case of castration resistance M0. We have to continue the ADT to, reach, uh, to uh, retain the castrate levels that is serum testosterone less than 50 nanogram per ml. Uh, PSA doubling time is more than 10 months, then monitoring is preferred and uh, we can also uh, choose secondary hormone therapy. If the PSA doubling time is less than 10 months, then epilotomide, deratolomide and enzalotomide is our category 1 recommendations. And PSA, uh, periodic PSA and imaging are according to the risk stratification has been explained. In case of stable PSA and no metastasis, we can continue the same uh, therapy. In case of increased PSA or no mets, we can continue the same or change. In case of, in case of increased PSA or metastasis, systematic M1 metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer systematic therapy has to be started. In case of castration resistance M1, metastatic lesion biopsy should be done and testing for MSI high, high and uh, MMR and homologous recombination gene mutations to be done. Consider for tumor mutation burden testing. The treatment uh, protocol is androgen deprivation therapy to maintain the castrate level of testosterone. And it depends upon the prior docetaxel or, or novel hormone therapy to be given. If there, is, if there is no prior docetaxel given or no prior novel hormonal therapy is given, then category 1 recommendation is Arbitron or docetaxel or enzalutamide. If prior docetaxel is given and no prior novel hormone therapy is given, then uh, recommendation is docetaxel and uh, ciprocel T. And in case of circum, uh, certain circumstances, uh, ciprocel T is given, radium-223 is given for symptomatic bone mats. In case of prior docetaxel and no hormonal therapy, certain uh, circumstances, uh, olaparib and rucaparib has been given for homologous recombination repair genes and pembrolizumab for MSI high or MMR. Or if uh, tumor mutation burden is more than 10 mutations per megabytes. And the other option is carbazitexel, that is second line microtubule inhibitor and carboplatin. Other option is radium-223 for bonimates. In case of prior docetaxel, if it's been given and no novel hormonal therapy is given, the options are arbitron, enzalutamide and carbazitexel. Other circum uh, in certain circumstances, uh, metoxantron has been given which uh, in patients who cannot tolerate other therapies. It is mainly palliative therapy and uh, pembrolizumab and carbazitexel carboplatin combination and radium-223 for bone mats. <clears throat> In case of both, if has been given earlier prior docetaxel and novel hormonal therapy, then the options are carbazitexel or docetaxel rechallenge. Then circum uh, certain circumstances, uh, metoxantron is given in palliation and olaparib and rucabari for uh, homologous recombination and repair gene, pembrolizumab for MSI high MMR, carbazitexel carboplatin combination and radium-223 for bone mates. Carbazitexel is a second generation microtubule inhibitor as an option after progression on docetaxel for patients with symptomatic metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer. It is category 1 recommendation in patients who has prior treatment to novel hormonal therapy. As per tropic trial, it increases overall survival. And uh, uh, pro pro Prozilica study has been uh, done to compare the dosage of carbazitexel that is 20 mg per meter square or 25 mg per meter square in 1200 patients with metastatic castration resistance prostate cancer who is progressed on docetaxel. Lower dose was found no not to be found to be non-inferior to the higher dose of for me median overall survival. Uh, and the combination of carbazitexel and uh, carboplatin with growth factor support can be considered for fit patients for aggressive variant metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer that is visceral mats are present if low PSA and bulky disease, high LDH levels, high CEA levels, light lytic bone uh, mats or neuroendocrine prostate cancer is tolerant. Coming on to the radiotherapy, in the clinically localized disease, it is preferred in very low, low favorable intermediate risk and considered in case of prophylactic nodal radiation, in cases of favorable, unfavorable, intermediate, high and high, very high risk. Androgen deprivation therapy should be used in combination with radiotherapy unless medically contraindicated. Brachytherapy combined with androgen deprivation therapy 
or stereotactic uh, body radiotherapy combined with androgen deprivation therapy can be considered if delivering long courses of external beam radiotherapy would present a medical or social hardship. In cases of regional disease, a nodal radiation should be performed. Clinical no positive nodes should be dose escalated. Androgen deprivation therapy is required unless med medically contraindicated and addition of airway around to androgen deprivation therapy can be considered. In case of low, uh, low volume metastatic disease, as per a stampede trial, the pre-specified low volume subset has a significant improvement in both failure-free survival and overall survival if the radiation is given to primary disease. Nodal treatment should be performed in context only to a clinical trial and bracket therapy is not recommended outside of a clinical trial. In case of high volume metastatic disease, forward and stampede trial, Radiation therapy to the prostate should not be performed outside a clinical trial unless for a palliative intent. No, because no improvement in overall survival is there from uh, addition of radiotherapy to primary when combined with the standard systematic therapy. In case of radiotherapy, the ac accuracy of the treatment should be verified by daily prostate localization with any of the following that is, image guided radiotherapy using CT scan, ultrasound, and implantin markers or electromagnetic targeting tracking. The, uh, the use of perirectal spacer materials uh, should be implanted between the prostate and rectum in cases uh, of organ confined prostate cancer undergoing external beam radiation therapy in order to displace the rectum from high do uh, radiation dose to reduce rectal bleeding as the uh, most common complication of external beam radiotherapy in case of prostate cancer is rectum. The regimens which are uh, used for external beam radiotherapy are moderate hypofractionated Hypofractionated means it is more than two gyri, and this is the most preferred uh, regimen. Other regimens are conventional fractionation and versus ultra uh, hypofractionation. Nowadays, protein beam, uh, proton beam therapy has been used. Advantages are the major majority of energy is deposited at the end of its track, that is Bragg's peak. And but there is no evidence to support its superior tumor control versus external beam radiotherapy. Brachytherapy can be used as a monotherapy. Uh, it can be used as a temporary high dose rate in case of iridium-192 and permanent low dose in case of iodine-125, palladium-103 and cesium-131. It can also be used as a boost added to the external beam radiotherapy. Patient selection. The brachytherapy is not suitable for a large gland size that is more than 50 cm. Uh, centimeter cube if the baseline urinary symptoms are already present and there is a prior procedure, procedure like a, a transurethral resection of prostate because it increases the risk of adverse effects. Stereotactic body radiotherapy in a patient with limited, it can be used in a patient with limiting met, limited metastatic disease to the vertebra or petty peri, uh, paravertebral region when the ablation is the goal. That is concern for impending fracture or tumor encroachment on the of the on the spinal nerves or vertebra. In a patient with oligometastatic progression, where progression-free survival is the goal, and in symptomatic patients where the lesion occurs in or immediately adjacent to a previously irradiated treat, treatment field. In cases of post radical prostatectomy, adjuvant RT is used in standard fractionation as compared to the hypofractionation which is uh, used as a definitive radiotherapy. The indication for adjuvant radiotherapy post radical prostatectomy is adverse pathological features like pathological T3A disease, positive margin or seminal vesicle involvement or post, uh, radio, uh, post radical prostatectomy detectable PSA levels. It is given within one year of radical prostatectomy after the operative side effects have improved or stabilized. With radiotherapy, Undetectable PSA levels that become subsequently detectable or increases on two measurements that is PSA recurrence or PSA persistent. Salvage or radiotherapy is used. Uh, external wave radiotherapy within that within with two years of bicalutamide, that is first generation non-steroidal uh, non anti-androgen 150 mg per day, demonstrates improved overall survival and metastasis free survival. In a randomized trial, RTOG 9601 versus radiation alone in salvage setting. And another uh, trial is GETUG trial in which radiotherapy with six months of androgen deprivation therapy 
improved biochemical or clinical progression at five years on a uh, versus radiation alone in a patient with a rising PSA levels after a radical prostatectomy. And uh, radium-223 is alpha emitting radiopharmaceutical agent which is used for symptomatic bone mats in case of castration or resistant prostate cancer. Uh, it increases the overall survival, but it cannot be used in case of visceral mats or bulky nodal disease. The, uh, it is used intravenously once for a six month. But it is generally not it is not combined with chemotherapy because of the additive myelosuppression effect, and it is not combined with abiraterone because it increases the fracture risk. But can be used with denosumab or, zol or zolantronic. Palliative radiotherapy. It is used eight gyri as a single dose is effective in for pain palliation, but retreatment rates are higher. Strontium uh, 89 and samarium 153 is used for widespread bone mats as palliation. Alternative palliative dosing is 30 gyri in 10 fractions or 37.5 gyri in 50 fraction, 15 fractions. So radical prostatectomy, definitive radical prostatectomy is uh, done when the prostate cancer can be completely excised surgically with a life expectancy of more than 10 years and there are no serious comorbid conditions that would contraindicate an elective operation. In case of salvageable salvage radio, uh, radical prostatectomy, highly selected patients with local recurrence after radiotherapy, brachytherapy or cryotherapy in absence of metastasis. But the morbidity that is incontinence, loss of erection, anastomotic stricture is very high. Now sparing uh, red, uh, radical prostatectomy is now being done. It is uh, the interfacial dissection between the levator fascia and the prostatic fascia to preserve the neurovascular bundle of walls. And before, uh, preoperatively, we cannot make a decision, definitive decision on a nerve sparing radical prostatectomy. It is made an intraoperative findings only. In case of uh, uh, palpable induration, if it is present, if there is no induration, but uh, neurovascular bundle is fixed to the prostate or there is inadequate tissue over the posterior lateral surface in the specimen after the excision of prostate, there is a risk for margin positive. Then nerve sparing radical prostatectomy cannot be done. Uh, pelvic lymph node dissection is uh, combined with radical prostate. Extended pelvic lymph node dissection is done for more complete staging and it cures some patients with microscopic mats. Therefore, an extended pelvic lymph node dissection is preferred when uh, pelvic lymph node dissection is performed. Pelvic lymph node dissection can be excluded in the patient with less than 2% predicted probability of nodal mats. By nomogram, this avoids 47.7% of pelvic lymph node dissection at cost of missing 12.1% of positive pelvic lymph node. An extended pelvic lymph node dissection includes a removal of all node bearing uh, tissues. The limits are the anteriorly external like vein, the posteriorly uh, floor of pelvis, medially bladder wall, laterally pelvic side wall, distally Cooper's ligament and proximally internally like artery. The MESIC uh, trial in case of uh, in case of pelvic lymph node dissection states that in case of pathological N positive node after radical prostatectomy with PLND, androgen deprivation therapy should be started within eight weeks. It increases the overall survival and quality of life. Coming on to the androgen deprivation therapy, it includes the architectomy, LHRH agonist that is gosseralin, uh, hysterolin liberolide, LHRH antagonist, Degaralix, and uh, new upcoming Relugolix. Uh, the antiandrogens are first generation, nilotamide, flutamide, and uh, bicalutamide. The second generation are abiteron and a recently approved and angelotamide, apalotamide, and derolotamide. There is a new LHRH antagonist, Relugolix, that is being uh, studied in HERO trial. It has been compared with the leporolide, the recurrence after the primary deferent therapy, newly diagnosed metastatic castration, naive disease or advanced localized disease deemed unlikely to be cured with definitive therapy. The primary endpoint was the sustained castrate levels of testosterone through 48 weeks, which showed non-inferiority and superiority of relugolics over leporolide. In uh, case of clinically localized N0M0 disease, Neoadjuvant uh, neo androgen deprivation therapy for radical prostatectomy is strongly discouraged outside a clinical trial and androgen deprivation therapy should not be used as a monotherapy. Use of neoadjuvant concurrent or adjuvant to radiotherapy 
in it is uh, it is used in case of unfavorable intermediate high or very high risk prostate cancer the use of adt when radiotherapy is be given the duration should be 4 to 6 months as per atog 9408 trial there is uh, no benefit of uh, adding chemotherapy to androgen deprivation therapy plus radiotherapy if a brachytherapy is being added to external beam radiotherapy in this setting, then four to six months of androgen deprivation therapy is option. In case of high and very high risk groups, one to three years of androgen deprivation therapy is used. This is uh, uh, in accordance with the RTOG 920 trial and EORTC 22961 trial, which shows superior survival when long term androgen deprivation therapy were added to external beam radiotherapy versus short term. In case of regional disease, Radiotherapy with two to three years of neoadjuvant concurrent or adjuvant androgen deprivation therapy is used. Patient with lymph node meds found that radical prostatectomy should be considered for immediate androgen deprivation therapy or uh, with or without external beam radiotherapy. In case of non metastatic castration, naive disease observation is preferred over EDT. Patients with elevated PSA or a shorter PSA doubling time and then other, otherwise long expectancy should be encouraged to consider androgen deprivation therapy earlier. In case of metastatic castration, naive prostate cancer, according to stampede and latitude trial, it, uh, the uh, abiraterone was used in combination with uh, prednisone over androgen deprivation therapy alone for metastatic castration, naive prostate cancer. It improves overall survival. Other drugs which are uh, which are being used are apalotomide in combination with androgen deprivation therapy compared with androgen deprivation therapy alone. That uh, Titan trial proves it's, uh, the overall survival has been improved. For enzalotomide in, uh, in enzymatic trial, enzalotomide plus androgen deprivation therapy was compared with androgen deprivation therapy plus first generation antiandrogen. It, uh, the combination of enzalotomide with ADT improved overall survival. ARCHIS uh, trial also predicts the uh, combination of androgen deprivation therapy plus enzalotomide. The ongoing trials are for uh, derolotomide, uh, which is being currently evaluated with combination with docetaxel and androgen deprivation therapy in RSNs trial. And there is RNO trial, which also uh, which also is for derolotomide in combination with androgen deprivation therapy versus ADT alone in cases of metastatic castration sensitive prostate cancer. The comparison of intermediate versus continuous androgen deprivation therapy. In case of non metastatic disease, in the 2015 meta analysis identified six randomized controlled trials comparing continuous with intermittent androgen deprivation therapy in patients with locally advanced prostate cancer. There was no difference in the mortality and progression. And but there was an advantage of the intermittent approach in case in terms of quality of life and our adverse effects. In case of metastatic disease, intermittent approach leads to marked improvement in the quality of life compared to the continuous approach in most studies. And the NCCN panel believes that intermittent androgen deprivation th uh, therapy should be strongly considered. Recently, a more personalized approach should be to treat all the patients of metastatic disease with androgen deprivation therapy. After seven months of uh, androgen deprivation therapy, patient can be assigned a risk category based on the PSA value at that time point. Rational for intermediate androgen deprivation therapy. Androgen deprivation therapy has, in, has its own side effect that is it increases the bone turnover and decreases bone mineral density, a surrogate for fracture risk in patients with non-metastatic disease. Bone mineral density of hip and spine decreases approximately by 2 to 3 percent per year during the initial therapy. In 2011, the FDA approved denosumab as a treatment to prevent bone loss and fractures during androgen deprivation therapy. Denosumab is an agent that binds to and inhibits the receptor of activation of NFKB ligand, that is rank ligand, to blunt the osteoclast function and de delay generalized bone resorption and local bone destruction. Other side effect of androgen deprivation therapy is greater risk for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Androgen deprivation therapy increases fat mass and decreases lean body mass. It increases the fasting plasma insulin levels and decreases insulin sensitivity. It also increases serum level of cholesterol and triglycerides. The immunotherapy, sepulosal T, autologous cancer vaccine involves collection of the WBCs, W divide blood cell fraction containing antigen presenting cells from each patient 
Exposure of the cells to the prostatic acid phosphatase granulocyte macrophage colony, colony stimulating factor that is a recombinant fusion protein and subsequent reinfusion of the cells. It is used as the initial therapy for asymptomatic or mild minimally symptomatic patients with metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer so that the so that when the disease was burden is lower and immune function is potentially more intact. It is an it is also an option for metastatic castration or resistant prostate cancer with prior treatment with docetaxel or novel hormone therapy but not for patient who, are, who has already received both. In case of use of the immunotherapy, the patient should be good have good ECOG status that is 0 or 1, estimated life expectancy greater than 6 months and low liver. The usual marker of benefits that are the decline in PSA levels and improvement in bone or CT scans are not seen. Therefore, benefit to the individual patient cannot be ascertained using current available testing. Prostavec uh, is an immunization approach that includes the gene sequencing for PSA and three cause stimulatory molecules B71, ICAM1 and LFA collectively diagnosed at TRICOM. This is still under trials. Immune checkpoint inhibitors. The tumor testing for microsatellite instability, high and efficient mismatch repair is recommended in patients with metastatic castration or resistant prostate cancer and may be considered in the patients with regional or castration high metastatic prostate cancer. The pre uh, pre prevalence of mismatch repair deficiency in metastatic castration uh, uh, castration resistant prostate cancer is estimated to be 2 to 5 percent. If the tumor MSI high or uh, mismatch repair gene is identified, the panel recommends referral to a genetic counseling for consideration of germline testing for uh, link syndrome. The pembrolizumab was uh, approved as per keynote trial. It is anti PD1 antibody in patients with unresectable or metastatic tumor burden tumor uh, mutation burden high that is more than 10 mutations per megabase solid tumors that have progressed prior uh, following treatment who has no satisfactory alternative of the trial which is going uh, on are nivolumab plus ipilimumab that is checkmate 650 trial which is under study for metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer parp inhibitors poly uh, poly adp ribose polymerase inhibitors they block the enzymatic action of the warp which repair single strand DNA breaks in patient harboring mutations in homologous recombination repair genes responsible for repairing double stranded DNA breaks. The use of PARP inhibitors lead to synthetic lethality because of concomitant deficiency in both single as well as double stranded repair. Tumor testing for alteration in homologous recombination DNA repair genes such as BRCA1, BRCA2, ATM. TLB2, FANCA, RAD, CHECK, and CDK12 is recommended in patients with metastatic prostate cancer. The prof, uh, according to the profound trial, the Olaparib has been FD approved in May 2020. It is used in patients with metastatic castration or resistant prostate cancer and or suspected germline or somatic homologous recombination repair gene mutation in at least one of the 14 genes and who has uh, previously received treatment with enzalatomide or ab ab abiraterone. Another PARP inhibitor, Rukaparib, has been approved as per a Triton 2 trial. The primary endpoint was objective response rate in patients with measurable disease and there was 43.5% in, uh, in this uh, BRCA1-2 mutated uh, population. Used in, it is used in patients with metastatic castration resistant or suspected so germline or somatic BRCA1, BRCA2 mutation and who has previously received treatment with both a novel uh, hormonal agent as well as one toxin containing chemotherapy. It should not be used in patients with homologous recombination repair gene mutation other than BRCA1-2. PARP inhibitors which are being, uh, uh, which are being investigated as per amplitude trial is Nirapari. It has been investigated in combination with uh, abiraterone in men with metastatic castration sensitive prostate cancer with homologous recombination repair gene mutation. And other trials are Galahad and Talabro trial, which uh, are also which are which is also showing promising results in case of PARP inhibitors, then uh, Niraparib and uh, Telazoparib in patients with metastatic resistant prostate cancer with BRCA1-2 mutation positive. The overall response rate is for, uh, response rate is 41% and 44% respectively. PSMA targeting approach. PSMA prostate specific membrane antigen. This is transmembrane protein which is highly expressed 
in secretory acinar cells of epithelium of prostate levels are increased following the treatment with abiraterone acetate or enzalutamide radio ligand therapy using beta emitter lutetium 177 has encouraging efficacy which result, uh, results with limited toxicity in patients with advanced prostate cancer it has been recently improved via vision trial but P, uh, psma pet scan is per, uh, prior to the treatment with psma lutetium is must targeted alpha therapy with actinicium uh, 225 psma 617 shows even stronger anti tumor effects in patients this uh, based on surrogate parameters but the therapeutic range needs to be improved a novel alpha therapy approach deals with thorium 227 level P. psma antibody is also under trials a psma pet nccn recommends the currently fda approved psma agents gallium 68 and f18 p flu uh, folostat because of the increased sensitivity and specificity of psma pet tracers for detecting the micromets disease compared to the conventional imaging that is ctmr at both initial staging and biochemical recurrence the panel rec- uh, does not feel that conventional images imaging is a necessary prerequisite to psma pet other ongoing trials are uh, captello tri- uh, 20, 281 trial that is working on uh, akt inhibitor uh, capiva uh, sertib with in combination with abiraterone in uh, men with uh, metastatic castration sensitive prostate cancer other trials which uh, is compare uh, our cos- cosmic and contact trial it uh, is testing the combination of capazotinib a multi tyrosine kinase inhibitor and a immune checkpoint inhibitor atezolizumab the combination demonstrate an overall response rate of 32% and a median duration of response of 8.3 months in a heavily pretreated population of patients with metastatic castration or resistant prostate cancer in case of visceral metastasis which uh, it occurs in liver lung adrenal gland peritoneum or brain soft tissue or lymph node sites are not considered as visceral metastasis cross resistance between novel and androgen receptor pathways inhibitor is common with sequential therapy this lack of response of patients with metastatic castration or resistant prostate cancer to abiraterone and enzalutamide particularly after failure of these agents is associated with detect- detection of androgen receptor variant that is arv7 messenger rna in circulatory tumor cells using an rna based polymerase chain reaction assay the prevalence of arv7 positivity is only 3% patients prior to treatment with enzalutamide abiraterone and texin nccn recommends use of arv7 tests can be considered to help guide selection of therapy in post arbitron enzalutamide metastatic castration resistant prostate cancer thank you everyone i think shivam should summarize and shivam you did not tell us about uh, the surgical approach which has also evolved over a period of years actually so actually malika what has happened is that he has presented the guidelines this was not his topic what was your topic shivam a recent advances in uh, management of prostate cancer so what are the re- what do you understand by recent advances uh, various dr- uh, drugs which has uh, been approved for metastatic uh, castration and resistant just, prostate just cancer drugs. just drugs i uh, know sir and and how how old is recent if, if somebody asked you to write recent advances how far back you should go within uh, one or two years you picked up the latest nccn guidelines and talked about the guidelines you understand shivam the purpose of given this topic is not this like dr mallika said advances in surgery has any advances in robotic prostatectomy made in last one year how the robotic prostatectomy has changed in last one year or for that matter how the diagnostic methods have changed sir what is what is new sir in diagnostic uh, psma pet scan has been introduced which is more specific for what diagnostic are the, what are the changes in the mri imaging of uh, prostate cancer in last one year what is multi something you said no uh, multi parameter ha so this, what does uh, it mean uh, it is more uh, specific to uh, uh, diagnostic what, ca what it includes CA so it is multi parametric it includes two three different uh, things which are amalgamated together what are those it includes the prostate uh, volume no mri there are different mri techniques also no 
you must have heard of diffusion weighted imaging which is actually very useful in differentiating benign from malignant cbt strictures so all these different tests are put together when you say multi parametric so it yeah. may, uh, i must say otherwise uh, it was extremely extremely rehearsed and well presented um, uh, shivam really i must congratulate you but you should you mixed up uh, the recent advances with the guidelines guideline is nccn guideline is something which is available on the net it is for everybody yes. yeah even if you are presenting from nccn guidelines you should say what changes have come between yes. this the last version exactly exactly that's what i wanted to say you don't have to talk about castration androgen deprivement therapy these are all established you see even even your risk prediction score you know which is the latest risk prediction score that has come uh, sir uh, that is cipher score and in, uh, in case of uh, somatic mutation uh, mutations uh, the cipher score is there and oncotype uh, dx score it is polygenic risk score now okay. see modified gleason risk score which you are talking about is a 2013 score which was validated in 2016 it's a 6 year old 9 year old scale done by john hopkins this is not recent advance which is a decade old is not a recent advance say dr mallika had been talking about circulating tumor cells there is a lot of work done in uh, prostate cancer on circulating tumor cells you know about it microfluids a lot of research work published in 2022 which now says that microfluid analysis using the circulating tumor cells uh, psa circu psa of the circulating tumor cells is as good as the conventional psa that we used to give and it gives even more information it's so happening that jama has published a viewpoint yesterday on it so basically when you are talking of recent advances you should focus on recent advances see you talked 50 minutes on it uh covered the guidelines very well talked about everything well but had this been the examination question and had this been your answer how much would you have scored see when 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 a topic is given then you say recent advances in screening recent advances in treatment that is surgery robotic has been an advance but the robotic technique of robotic is also advancing every day so you have to talk about what are the changes people have done in the robotic surgery what new has come in robotic there are five or six different techniques of robotic prostatectomy alone So basically the purpose of giving a seminar is to make you do a literature search the purpose is not for you to go to a single source and present okay um, shivam let for the benefit of all of us summarize your findings so what are the recent advances if not in one last one year say last five years so tell us uh, starting from imaging what is new in imaging uh, the psma pet scan has been introduced which is more specific for uh, prostate cancer it is uh, it is more beneficial than conventional mri or ct scan and uh, if uh, psma pet scan the prostate uh, is cancer comes positive then we can give psma uh, lutetium 175 177 which is a radio uh, ligand agent this uh, which is recently approved metastatic castration uh, resistant prostate cancer no we are talking about imaging abhi na so go step yes, by sir. step so imaging me treatment mat lao so in imaging one is the psma pet scan anything else we talked about the different types of mri techniques that can be used anything else acha fir next after imaging what comes what's new in the guidelines you can summarize quickly in case of uh, management uh, various yes. uh, uh, second generation anti androgens have been approved like uh, apalatomide and enzalutamide and uh, the various uh, da daratolamide is being under clinical trials carbazitexel has been approved what is relicolix is it is lhrh uh, antagonist and uh, what is unique about it it was compared to sir uh, leprolide 
which was a... no what is unique about it first it is not uh, lhrh antagonist it is something else, some other antagonist it is gnh gnrh antagonist and what is unique about it oh this is the first oral gnhrh oral. antagonist see that is that is the kind of recent advances which should come from you this is the first oral gnhrh antagonist and the only one approved by fda till date and what's the recent advances in treatment uh, there is a now sparing radical prostatectomy that's old that for a decade so what are the complications of radical prostatectomy there is a now injury okay varnas nerves most common intraoperative uh, hemorrhage intraoperative hemorrhage so the, how does how do the newer techniques help in minimizing these complications so basically what is the advantage why robotic surgery has come up in a big way in prostate cancer at least not so much in other uh, you know bladder and all malignancies but especially in prostate it's becoming rather a standard of surgery see from five port conventional robotic we have come to a single port robotic prostatectomy advances from the time you screen a disease to follow up of the patient so for each thing you have to go and search the pubmed see what new has come on that particular topic what new has come on robotic surgery what new has come on radiotherapy techniques what new has come on endogen deprivation what new has come on castrate resistance 